Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we're returning to Rule the Waves. This is going to be the third part of a February live stream that I did in my uh, much larger Let's Play series of Rule the Waves. Uh, in this series I started a, a war against the United States. In the second part of that uh, series I won the war against the United States. And so this is part three. This is kind of looking at the aftermath, the immediate aftermath of the war with the United States. Uh, and moving forward with my Imperial Japanese Navy. Uh, again, we're playing through Rule the Waves, which is a turn-based naval strategy game which takes place from 1900 till 1925, uh, and right now we just won a war against the United States. Uh, so this will be part three. Uh, we're really just jumping in midstream, so I know it'll be a little bit abru abrupt. This is just an intro uh, that I recorded after the fact. But I hope you guys enjoy. Let me know what you think in the comments, the descriptions below. And uh, uh, thank you again for watching. Now here's the show. Um, the AI cushion is okay. Um, I've heard complaints that it doesn't do good at ship design late game, and this game goes to 1925, so we're pretty much almost a late game. Um, but I haven't seen any blatant examples of poor AI. I'm really not probably the person who can judge for you because I'm not great at battles, and I don't take the time I should to micromanage the battles. Um, so it's hard for me to really say. Uh, but I would say that it's decent. Um, it's adequate, I would say. As far as these subs... We're going to go ahead and scrap these 1912 coastal subs. And they'll be replaced by these other subs that are building. The submarines obviously provo pr uh, proved very useful for us in that last war. And I'm just kind of scrapping some ships based on, uh, you know, the, the seeming utility or lack thereof of some of these ships. We lost the Katori, which is kind of our heavier battleship, pre-dreadnought battleship class. It's an old Japanese battleship has one battle star from the battle it fought, and you can see the battle stars get added to ships. Um, it has a ton of secondary guns there. I think it still has some use, maybe as a coastal ship. Um, Arizona is in the reserve fleet. We're going to put that in the active fleet. It's going to put us back in the red. Um, let's see... You know what? No, we're going to... Well, I don't know. Maybe we put it in the reserve fleet. Um, our battle cruisers, I don't know how useful they would have been in that battle as well, because they, they move fast, but they only have 12-inch guns. So maybe it was good they ran away. Maybe that helped us not lose as bad. And I think I'm going to scrap the... Well, no, we're going to wait on those. What we'll, we'll do is we'll put these light cruisers that are obsolete. We're going to put them into the reserve fleet. Um, we've got to move it back to the home area, though, to do that. It's on foreign station right now. And that'll save us some money by moving these ships into reserve. We're also going to move the Iwami into reserve. It might be a decent ship to keep with an elite crew, but we'll move it into reserve. Save some cash. You save more if you mothball them, but it takes longer to bring them up to speed. Um, these light cruisers are still okay, I think. We'll keep them. Kasagi, I really like. They're very useful, I think. Kind of glad we denied those two battles with the U.S. toward the end of the war, because I think would have risked them. Um, you know, if they had won those, maybe that would have propped up their government for a bit. Yeah, okay, let's take a look at the Almanac here. Three battleships, three buildings, so they'll give us six. Four battle cruisers, so we'll have ten total, uh, which actually puts us above no one. Go surprise, you know, go figure. Um, two heavy cruisers, eleven light cruisers, puts us above no one. I guess we're above the U.S. or sorry, Italy. Destroyers, we have forty-four. I would say that's adequate for now. We don't have any minesweepers, but that hasn't seemed to be an issue so far. You don't lose. You do lose crew experience. So if you mothball or reserve a fleet, you can see some of these crews are poor uh, because it's considered it was a reserve fleet just brought over from America. hasn't trained a whole lot, so the the crew quality is poor. Additionally, you know the ships, the Fuso just was recently commissioned this year, so they haven't trained up yet. A ship that's been in service for a really long time, like the Iwami, which has been active the entire time, has an elite crew. So as you do mothball or put 
if you res if you put troops in reserve, it makes their experience lower. If you put them in mothballs, it makes their experience even lower. Um, so putting a ship in in mothballs or reserve does affect the quality of the crew. Um, I'm not quite sure what else we want to do. The nice thing is with the win, even though we didn't get a ton of prestige, we did lower our unrest level. Um, I want to build some new ships and design some new ships, but I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and jump ahead one turn. I need to really figure out what I want the layout of my fleet to be. Uh, let's see. Why are these guys in Northern Europe? Man, they went on a journey. Uh, let's bring these guys home. Move. Asia. Okay. So they're coming home. West Africa is at our colony in Angola, so that's fine. And let's see here. Let's check the map. You can see here it gives you a check mark on your possessions, making sure you've got adequate ships in the regions that you have possessions in. So we ejected the U.S. from North Asia and most of Southeast Asia. The U.S. still has Guam. That's their last remaining outpost in the West. Um, that war went relatively well. And I think it's fair to call us an empire now. We own the Philippines, we own Formosa, we own all of Korea. Additionally, we own Angola, uh, which is kind of our oil producing hub. So at this point, I would say, I think it's safe to say Japan is an empire. Um, in service, you can see we've got the, the six ships, four battle cruisers. Well, no, actually, three battleships and four battle cruisers. Um, No, if you reactivate the ship, the crews do not automatically go back. It takes time. I think if you mothball a ship, I think it takes six months for the crew to be fully worked back up and brought into service. Um, you also get, a, I think, an efficiency penalty on the quality of the ship. I'm not sure about that, but I know the crew takes a while. So, again, reserve fleet, they come up to snuff quicker than they do with mothballed. Uh, but it, it's all relative. So, you know, newer ships take a while as well to work up and get into... Uh, fighting shape as well. Uh, let's see. Let's build another Magi class. Let's, I don't want to design something new because it t costs like $9 million or something to design something totally new. And I don't know if we've had enough um, changes yet in terms of the, you know, the quality of the ship yet to, to warrant a new design. So we'll put another Magi down, which will be done in about 30 months. You can see there that puts us into the red. But building another ship will make the people happy. Uh, we'll have seven battleships either built or under construction. It's, that exceeds the Russians if you exclude their battle cruiser fleet, which they're building a lot of battle cruisers, it looks like. Um, America's building nine battleships. Thank goodness the war ended quickly. Um, but yeah, and you also can see here one of the other things that impacts the budget is the tension levels. So if tensions drop, you know, as these get higher, your budget goes up. As these get lower, your budget goes down. You can also spend more money on the intel effort by increasing it or lowering it. You can also change how much of your budget goes to research and development. Right now we're putting about 8% of our total naval budget into that. You can see, obviously, you unlock different naval guns. Um, you can build coastal fortifications in different areas. Um, you can see what your coastal fortifications are. Right now we only have them in Japan. I didn't think they were worth much, so I haven't put them on there, but I imagine if we were the victim of a surprise attack, it would probably be uh, important. Um, you can see ships under construction and service. You can see the map. You can also expand out and see what ships are where. Um, So what I was trying to say, and maybe I didn't get my point across, Crucian, is that if you mothball a ship, the crew will drop from elite, I believe, slowly. So they don't immediately become a poor crew. But over time, as it's mothballed longer and longer, the quality of the crew will steadily decrease down to poor if they're mothballed. Then when you bring them from mothballed to active, the crew will not immediately go back to elite. They could become elite over time. And one of the reasons some of my crews are elite is because I actually have extra training set up here. So you can see here we've got gunnery as a training priority and night fighting as a training priority. So we're actually spending 50% more than the standard budget on training. And you can see there's different ammunition loadouts on the ship. You can set the different types of targets and how you want to use your ammo against those types of targets depending on the caliber of guns. 
But basically, um, over time, uh, the longer a ship is in active service, the experience of the crew will go up. And that's to simulate time that you're at sea as you're training and your crew's getting better and better over time. And um, if you are mothballed or in reserve, obviously you're not doing all the, the things of being at sea. It's kind of like the French Navy during the Napoleonic Wars when they were constantly blockaded and they got very little sailing time and the quality of the crews constantly decreased. It didn't matter that they went to war and that maybe some of them had been in war previously. They just didn't get enough sailing time. You don't instantly become proficient at your job again. So that's what the mothball and reserve sort of aspect is, is supposed to simulate. You can't just throw a ship in mothball, bring it on a mothball a day later, and have a, a, an excellent crew. It just it doesn't work that way. Uh, and that's what that simulates. Private shipbuilding, expanding our docks. So it looks like the uh, there was problems delivering the equipment for the Ashrumo, which has delayed the construction by a month. And France is halting a battleship due to financial difficulties. Okay, we've got seven months till any of those are completed. Meanwhile, we can see these submarines will be done soon. More problems delivering some of this equipment. Good lord, guys, get your act together. Okay, so some of the subs are commissioned. The Russian government is interested in buying the rights to improve design calculations. For three million, no, we, I'm not going to sell the Russians something that will allow them to make ships more efficiently. Additionally, I don't need the money that bad. Okay. People of Germany have raised 50 million by popular subscription to build a new battleship. That's kind of neat. That simulates sort of the um, fact that historically, uh, like India and Australia and whatnot, raised patriotic subscriptions to um, purchase certain warships. The Russian government's offering to sell us the rights to five inch guns of quality one. I'm okay with that. We need good guns, we've got a decent amount of cash. Man, we're having all sorts of equipment delivery problems. I don't really have a ton of money that I want to throw around to build new ships, and tensions are really low anyway, so, whoa, tensions are zero with Germany. The new naval secretary believes torpedo boats are the most important part of the Navy. He wants you to build at least 28 additional torpedo boats. I will not allow the Navy to be micromanaged in this way, a hit to prestige and budget. We do not really need that many torpedo boats, but we could build half the number. It's a hit to prestige. Or, of course, sir. Of course, sir. So now we have to build 28 destroyers. I don't know if I can afford that. Um, <laughs> okay. I mean, we do need new destroyers. We don't have... A lot of ours are almost over 10 years old now. I think what we'll do is... These guys were rebuilt in 1916, though. So I think what we'll do... Eh, blah. I guess we'll just design a new new uh, destroyer. So we go into the design window, we choose the type of ship we want to design, and then we go ahead and we just auto-design it. Auto-design ship of a DD class. So it's 900 tons, um, all okay. You can see here it has six torpedoes now. It's got a triple, two triple, tur two triple torpedo mounts along the center line, and it's got three four-inch guns. Can we make them five-inchers? I mean, we can make this up, the tour, the destroyers bigger now, right? I think we can make them up to 1,500 tons now. So obviously they're going to be more expensive. So it'll be 32 knots fast, which is the speed of our fastest destroyer. It'll have 5-inch guns of the Russian quality that we just built, quality 1, which means, I don't have a comparison here, but if you compare, well, actually, so you can see max range 1,300. And then you can see the armor penetrations here. If we were to drop the quality of the gun, well, I don't. I guess we can't do that just on our own. But um, it gives you better armor penetration and better range to have a better quality gun. So, yeah, it looks like a pretty good ship. Why don't we drop it to 1,100? Yeah, we can do that. Drop it to 1,100, and you can see here, down here is the main thing. It'll show you whether you're overweight or not. And by dropping 100 tons, we'll save some money. So we'll go ahead and we'll save the Nakazi class. 
And I guess we'll build 28 of them. Um, we're going to rapidly run out of money. So, holy crap, I'm going to bankrupt our country building destroyers just so we can get a bump in prestige. Oh boy. Okay, let's go ahead and build eight more. <laughs> our Secretary of the Navy is going to bankrupt us. That's okay. Twelve million, so we've got like two months worth of money. Um, do we have anything coming off the ways in that period of time? Well, battleship's done in three months if it doesn't break down. So we may have to halt some of these constructions as well. Okay. So let's go ahead and jump ahead. An unknown nation has stolen industrial secrets from us. That sucks. And another. German government's offering to sell us the rights to improve diesel engines. <laughs> no. Uh, we need to save our money. Advances in submarines. It seems like our scientists are doing pretty well in submarines. Um, how the hell are we going to cut cut costs. I guess we can halt the construction of... Well, these guys only have five months left. I guess we can halt the construction of both of these. And the Ashuma was done next turn, hopefully. So, there you go. Okay, an influential industrialist offers to support an increased naval budget if you'll place large share of shipbuildings in his shipyards. So, corruption! Um, this will strengthen our naval and navy at an important time. It'll give us increased budget, but hurt our prestige. This reeks of corruption. Such a thing would never enter my mind. We'll go ahead and decline that and get a boost in prestige. Um, with the completion of that one ship, uh, our budget is much closer to being balanced, although not quite. Um, Germany's proposed a five-year security arrangement. So basically, Germany wants to be our ally. You can see the tensions with Germany are down at the very bottom. We should enter such an agreement. This can benefit us both, but it'll hurt our budget, which we really can't afford to take a risk or hit against. It'll also hurt the prestige, which is kind of how you're judged in the game. Uh, seek broader arrangements to take interest of all nations into account. Again, that'll hurt budget and prestige. Avoid entanglements that will tie our foreign policy to an irresponsible and dangerous nation. Well, Germany's not a dangerous nation, although we did fight them, I think, at one point. But it'll increase the budget and increase tensions, which I'm okay with, because we need more money. Um... So there you go. We could have been allies with Germany, but I just don't see the benefit, especially with tensions so low, low across the board. Okay. So, get some of these destroyers completed. So I can... You're receiving much praise for building the required number of torpedo boats. I'm glad I'm receiving much praise. The Russian government's interested in buying the increased oblique penetration ability for 4.8 millions. By all means, I need money. So you can see how my priorities shift when I need money badly. But now that we have that money, we can restart our construction on those battleships for a little bit. And we have no need for your ramshackle inventions. Counterintelligence with at least stole technology explosive shells from us. This affair is leaked to the press. We shouldn't get upset over level spying, lose prestige. We should send a diplomatic note in the strongest possible language. Sure, let's do that. Increase tensions with Italy. I'm okay with that. Um, Great Britain appears to be considering a naval right rearmaments program. The government asks you for your advice. Condemn the adventurous policies of Great Britain. Prestige, budget, and uh, tension boost. Ships are no threat. Uh, yeah, we're going to condemn them because, hey, why not? So you can see tensions with the British are climbing up. I don't want to fight them, uh, but I do like prestige, and I do like to boost that prestige up a bit. Um, tensions seem to be somewhat arbitrary. I know some of the patches, I'm still operating under the main version of the game, Cushion, but tensions do seem to be largely arbitrary. Um, I will say that they do... Um, like I said, in the new ver newer versions of the game, there have been some patching done, so like big nations will be less apt to, uh, or small nations will be less apt to provoke big nations. You know, you won't see Italy provoking Great Britain as much. Um, 
it just doesn't make sense if they're dramatically undermanned uh, to try and fight against the British. Um, but other than that, I mean, they're great. The Naval League's complaining. Um, other than that, I would say uh, it does seem it, it is somewhat random. They're randomized events. I mean, it's a skin of the real world, uh, but it's just a skin in terms of the way nations have relations with each other. You, I think you might be more likely to have tensions increase with nations that you have colonies that you border. Um, so maybe you're more likely to have tensions between France and Germany, but there doesn't seem to be any, any real rhyme or reason. It's largely based on your decisions when random events come up. Prime Minister floats the idea of a shooting competition. Excellent idea. The light cruiser Unube wins the shooting competition. Our scientists, okay. Okay. So you can see our budget's improving a bit as some of these ships come under, under construction finish. Okay, so we just had a whole bunch of ships come into the Navy. We can go ahead and resume the Mejai uh, now that we're in the black again. Um, our Naval League is complaining we don't have enough battleships, which they're right. We're way behind everybody. Uh, the Russians were okay with, but again, the battle cruiser side of things, we really need a new battle cruiser, is what I would say. Um, although, with all the design and technological advances, maybe we just need a faster battleship. Um, because by this time period, you know, not really the 20s, but by into the 1930s, battleships uh, were becoming powerful enough that they could be both heavily armored and fast. So the concept of the battle cruiser uh, wasn't really necessary anymore. Additionally, uh, the horrible performance of the battle cruisers at the Battle of Jutland during World War I uh, kind of put a damper on the idea of fast ships being survivable in combat because they really weren't. Okay, so a whole bunch of destroyers that are commissioned into the Navy... Again, now we have a pretty healthy balance. What I think we need to do, our light cruisers are starting to get really old, and I think we need to go ahead and build a new light cruiser class. So our last light cruiser was designed in 1916, and I guess that wasn't that long ago. Actually, the Kasagi Rebuild, which I really like that ship, mainly as a, a commerce raider or kind of a patrol ship, but it operates really well on its own. So I think what we may do is... Maybe we'll rebuild the Kasagi again. Actually, I didn't see what I just did. Okay, go back in. We're going to rebuild the ship, which basically it just means kind of upgrade and modernize. So you can see here, replacing the old uh, machinery increases the available tonnage a bit, which we can throw that into turret armor, although not that much. Not that much either. Well, in that case, I don't really know if there's a point. I mean, the speed increase would... No, there's no point. No point in rebuilding the Kasagi, but I am going to build two. I know they're a little bit older, but I really like that class. So I'm going to build two of those. And then maybe we'll build a new light cruiser class. And again, I'm not going to design it myself. Just auto design. Um, you can see here, it uses 7-inch guns again. But it's only 4,900 tons? How the hell do you manage that? That's a heavy cruiser. I wanted a light cruiser. Okay. So it's using 5-inch guns. A lot of them. Somehow it's only 4,400 tons. And it's 28 knots. That's crazy! 30 mines. Okay. I'm happy with that. I would say I want to add some torpedo tubes. So... Um... I don't know if we can put a swivel mount on this. I don't think you can put a swivel mount on a on that type of ship. Or maybe you can. What if we do center line swivel mount? Torpedo tube center mounts can only be used with ships 2,000 tons or less. Center line torpedo mounts can only be 2,000 tons or less. Okay. It's also apparently very heavy. When we do that, well, I can make the ship bigger. I'm not too concerned about that. I mean, why don't we just make it 5,500 tons? There's really no reason not to. 
I would also say our turret should have at least three inches of armor and two inches on the top, mainly to protect against high explosive shells. Um, those turrets will be really vulnerable if they're not armored at all. Um, yeah, we'll make it a 6,000 ton light cruiser, I guess. Makes 28 knots, which is more than fast enough. Um, I want another two torpedo tubes isn't enough. Can we do center lines? So we can't do those. We'll do a port and a starboard. So mount both triples. Can we do that? Yeah, we can. Okay, update the ship graphic. You can see we've got a triple mount on each side of the ship. Torpedoes proved very useful in the last war, so we're lear learning from our lessons. Go ahead and hit OK. Ship design. And then that's a brand new 1920 ship, uh, which we'll build two of. So we're going to be building four light cruisers at the same time, as well as some destroyers. And the balance is okay with our funds in the bank. Again, you can see the cruiser situation, the light cruiser situation. We're dramatically behind Great Britain, which is understandable. Their fleet's substantially larger. But we're pretty much in parity with the U.S., Italy, Russia, or Germany. Um, and we'll actually be superior to them once these ships finish. Now, the problem is they're not very popular at home. People want battleships. Mm, lots of intelligence reports. Wow, that's a fast battle cruiser, 28 knots. Okay. So now that we've got a healthy balance again, yeah. Although in that, I mean, they had some other heavy cruisers uh, had like ten inch and eleven inch guns, uh, Kuchin. So, um, you know, I, uh, sure, I, maybe it shouldn't have been in the line of battle, but I think the idea was to replace the armored cruiser and act as kind of an advanced heavy fleet scout like the armored like the armored cruisers. The armored cruisers fought at Jutland as well and got their their asses handed them and mauled. I think the British lost like four or five armored cruisers. Uh, the Germans didn't really have any take place at Jutland, so they didn't lose any of those. Um, I think we need to build... I don't want another Magi class. It's a little bit old. So I think we're going to fast forward to the end of 1920 and then we'll design a new battleship. See some breakthroughs occurring. Majestic. Italian government offering to sell us the rights to a triple bottom. Sure. It's a reasonable price. So we could build a 44,000 ton behemoth battleship with 15 inch guns and triple turrets uh, with crazy armor. We may do that. Um, you can see here we now have. Uh, two Gamer classes, the other two were sunk. We got two Yashimiro classes, which are slightly bigger than the Gamer class, but still use those 14-inch guns, just in triple turrets. And then we've got a Mejai class, and Nagato, which is the Arizona. And um, we've got another one that'll be done in eight months. So we really need to get building on that. Our destroyers that we built are done. Uh, we have a ton of destroyers, actually, now. If we look, we got 72, way more than everybody else. Um, we could probably scrap some of them for budgetary reasons, but it does seem like we've got a healthier naval budget than before. Uh, when tensions were really high, our naval budget was right around here before we had the Philippines uh, and North Korea, and uh, we were straining at the bit. And now we've got almost $5 million monthly balance, uh, free cash. So we'll probably lay down two more battleships in the next next video. But I think what I'm going to do uh, is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to cut the stream off here. I've uh, been streaming for about an hour and a half. Uh, we won the war against the U.S., so huzzah. And uh, I appreciate you guys tuning in. And until next time, this is the Historical Gamer saying thank you for watching. I'd like to do more live streams. I think maybe having an agenda or something to talk about would be uh, a better approach. I'm not great at sort of filling air uh, in, in a live stream format. Um, not nearly as good as someone like Kushin or someone like Belugan, but, um, you know, uh, it's something I'd like to do more of. The difficulty with me is that I generally only have time in the middle of the night, uh, which can make, uh, you know, what's the point of streaming when no one's watching? But um, I appreciate you, Kushin, for tuning out. I didn't really keep an eye to see if anyone else was there. But again, thank you again, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and sign off. And until next time, 
Uh, everyone have a great day.